talk about openness the oers are of uh, are like implementation or uh, it is like manifestation of our openness as a philosophy it's a way of life it is a way where you share your things so you have this term associated with say open access open content open courseware open source software open is access is when the research literature is available for everyone for anyone who is interested in doing research and is available without any price and permission barrier it is open access many journals are open access you can just go to doag that is directory of open access journals and you can see lots of journals which give you latest information if you want to work on a particular area then open content when the content is available freely it's openly available for anyone to uh, download it to get uh, benefited from it to include in the online teaching and learning it is open content again the price permission barriers are done away with when the whole material whole content is available as a courseware like module 1 module 2 module 13 so a lot of exercises and activities as a whole package then it becomes open courseware and it is really you will be um, happy to know that there are many coursewares available we'll be talking about them in a little later open source softwares are the softwares where the source code is shared with everyone like a uh, source code is a source is a recipe of the software so you share the recipe so that anybody who has the recipe can tweak with it can replace the ingredient they do not like or add on the ingredient they want so that kind of a tweaking is possible with the open source softwares then open education where the education is more flexible where the restrictions are minimal and then the education open education resources those education resources which are open which are freely available to anyone without any restriction or minimum restrictions about which we'll be studying in little detail today open course open source softwares are open office firefox wordpress this is just to name any ubuntu linux and these then if you look at the history the evolution of uh, oer we see the 1994 vine hodges he gave the concept of learning objects and then the whole learning object was a small independent unit which can be used across the discipline as a digital content it can be shared with us so for example we make a resource on cell and cell is used in uh, biology cell is used in biochemistry home science and that can be used by anyone who is interested in making cell as a part of their course plus the metadata became in, important that is about the resource say cell was when was it made by whom was it made which language it is made available to a two or three a small annotation about that uh, cell and then Uh, things like this like it is a text or it is a video it is an audio so that becomes the metadata so that become important then in 1998 david wiley he gave the concept of open content open education open publication license and openness he promoted and he is still promoting it and in one of the crusaders of open education then in 2001 two remarkable things happened one was the mit courseware was launched mit was a brand name so everybody thought okay fine this is something like we should pay attention to and higher education institutions across the world they started looking for these open coursewares and another was larry lessing he gave the open licenses one of the most robust open licenses called creative commons which are the most widely used license even today and then the subsequent year unesco came up with a forum in which it tried to assess the impact of open education resources in higher education especially in the developing countries and gave the term for the first time as an oer or the open education resources and they defined it as teaching learning research materials in any medium digital or otherwise that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access use adaptation redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions then in 2007 cape town open education declaration was uh, 
there and then they said that open education should be promoted not even not only open education but open technologies should be uh, promoted so there was a lot of a uh, lot of enthusiasm for openness a lot of enthusiasm for open education then in 2009 dhaka declaration on oer was held was uh, came out and it again said that there should be awareness of oer they should one should promote it because they add value to the education they remove the barrier the cost barrier and the social discrimination plus they also recommended that the public funded institutions should try to release the resources they make as oer so that was a big thing like uh, if the the government should come forward in support in 2011 commonwealth of learning and unesco two of the organizations which work in the field of oer they came up with the guidelines on oer in higher education and it was in the year 2012 when many countries met in paris and came out with the paris oer declaration there were many recommendations but to name the few which are important is the first and the foremost was foster awareness and the use of oer how can we bring awareness about oer have uh, meetings have workshops encourage people to come together and things like that you have advocacy kind of thing then you should have facilitate enabling environments for the use of ict if you have enabling environment then only we can promote oer reinforce the development of strategies and the policies on oer without policy uh, these things go, don't go uh, much ahead so the policies the governmental policies the institutional policies and the strategies for its development should be reinforced then promote the understanding and the use of open licensing frameworks what is creative commons how do we remix it how do we don't infringe or remix the non compatible uh, licenses all that a basic understanding of what exactly because if, as we go forward there was a, there's a, there are researches which says that people are aware of it but they do not use it then what is the barrier for using it so that that could be because they don't understand the license then support the capacity building for the sustainable development of quality learning material so a uh, quality learning material should, should be uh, developed and how to come out with the sustainable models for uh, oer development then foster strategic alliance for oer two institutions coming together two countries coming together many countries coming together to develop oer and there are projects like open education uh, open education for better world these are the projects which are promoting oers encourage the development and adaptation of oer in variety of languages say in your local language say it is available in english and you want to translate it translate it in hindi translate it in gujarati marathi in your own language that is also a contribution to the world of openness it's a very good resource why do we have to reinvent the wheel again it is only that we will try to make that wheel available make that content available in our local language so that people who are studying in the local uh, vernacular language or the local languages are are also benefited by these resources and the cultural context of course there can be examples from different cultures especially in the social sciences and humanities so one should uh, make those changes give uh, local examples cultural examples and make uh, and adapt the oer then encourage research on oer any thing any field which has to grow must have research in must encourage research so one should encourage research on oer facilitate finding retrieving and sharing of where do we find oer is it in a marketplace or any other place no there are the places there are the sites where you get oer so how do we find them how do we download them how do we retrieve them how do we use them how do we share with others so all these are the ways which needs to be shared with the Uh, with the faculty with the students with the people the stakeholders encourage the open licensing of educational material pro produced with the public fund as i said it is always encouraged that the material produced by the public fund should be released as an oer then it was in 2017 in ljubljana slovenia there was a second world oer congress where oer action plan was uh, 
devised. They 111 countries, they participated, they come up with 41 recommended actions for mainstreaming open license resources. They were basically focusing on the 2030 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goal, especially the fourth one, which says that quality and lifelong education. They basically came up with five strategic areas like build the capacity of youth users to find, reuse, recreate, recre share OER. How do we find it? How do we reuse it, remix it? Then the language and the cultural issues, that was also there in the first one. Then ensure inclusive and equitable access to the quality OER. The inclusiveness is another area which needs a lot of work. So how to make these OERs more inclusive? And then build the quality of OERs, that they should be of good quality. Then, of course, the sustainability is very important for any, uh, any area to grow. So sustainability models and then, of course, the supportive policy environment should be developed, should be created for OER to grow. Then um, there are five R's of OER. OERs are defined, defined in five R's, the reuse, revise, remix, redistribute, retain. Reuse is when you can use it in unaltered form. Let's just take it and use it. You just have to acknowledge that whose resource it is. Then you revise it. You are allowed to adapt it, make changes, adjust, modify, change the language, anything that you can do. Remix. Suppose you're looking for a resource and that is not available in one resource, but two, three resources are available and you can use them to make one your own customized resource. So remixing is allowed. Redistribution. You can distribute, share it to n number of people your colleagues, your students, anyone. And you are able to retain the material after the learning event. After you've taken the classes, you are able to retain it as long as you want. So as we can see, any material associated with teaching and learning is a open education resource. It can be lecture, it can be a game, it can be curriculum, assignment, course, discussion. Even a half-page note can also be an OER. So if we go ahead, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll discuss uh, the different sites where you can go get OER.